You're killing it on a home advisor. What's the secret of success? My thing personally is I think they get better with the rhetoric and the propaganda. Biggest business challenge in 2021. Is because we only have 200 working days, we have to be somewhat selective of the opportunities that we take. Then you hired um, X State Farm adjuster and he sells for you now. You, yes. you said he's killing it. Uh, can you describe um, the journey from adjuster for insurance company to roofing sales? What have you seen? Well, it's, it's interesting. <clears throat> the gentleman that we hired, we had worked with in the, over the years when he's working with State Farm. And now seeing how he approaches things on the other side is interesting because now you get a, you get a taste as a contractor what you're dealing with with the insurance agent. And so it's, it's, a, neat, it's a neat dynamic. Would you say it's easier for him to argue with the insurance company or adjusters? I would think at first I would have thought that it would have been. And knowing the process and knowing how to go about it. But still, I think there's still some of it that doesn't come quite as easy. It's a totally different world when you're going from an adjuster into the contracting side of it. You would think that you would be more patient and more understanding, but you still can get tremendously frustrated. Absolutely. Does does he enjoy it more now? Does he like this job better to be on the well? I think that brighter that stage? he he's really an an advocate. He's a teacher, and so he loves to explain the process. And he's pretty much black and white. That says if it's a if it's a claim, then their responsibility is to pay, and then he he just approaches it like that. But he makes sure that he has a legitimate claim to process where i think a lot of people don't really always have the legitimate claim to process then we get hurt when the adjuster says no because we just really didn't have a claim to begin with hmm. if that makes sense do you think he has a better career now is he is happier like what's the transition for him is he is happy now and he wasn't happy before or why did he change I think from everything that he said is that it, he's, it was getting really corporate and we're a family owned business. You don't have, he literally likes the structure. Is it hard to recruit ex public adjust, uh, adjusters? I don't know. I think really over the years, some of the better ones that I thought might be better at, in the selling position rather than an adjuster. I've always kept them on my radar. So I'll continually be in their ear trying to see if they'll defect to the other side. Doesn't always mean because they tend to be very analytical and process driven. And so really on this side of it, you find it's more psychology than just process. And so knowing the selling process and dealing with homeowners and different personality types, I think was a big shift for an adjuster to come to this side. Cause they're always serving, they're always helping but trying to understand a homeowner's psychology of why they're gonna buy and maybe their personality style has probably really been the thing where the light's really gone on and gone. I understood process, but maybe I didn't understand the psychological and the personality side of it. You're killing it on the home advisor. What's the secret of success uh, for I you? I can't tell you. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> Come on, you, I you would, have I would four, say four point nine stars. I would say that it that it might be a little bit different because over the years of watching your content and knowing that that was a a part of your side saying with Home Advisor, I'd always be the one watching it, going, "We're actually experiencing decent, but we've been doing working with Home Advisor for six or seven years, and I think the frustration can be on the beginning end." where you get a bogus lead or you get a lead where you're wondering where it come from. The person doesn't remember sending it out. 
And then that can be frustrating for us. So then we're trying to get a credit back on a lead. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times new people coming into like a home advisor, Angie's list, don't really give a good argument. And home advisor doesn't give a clear path to refund based on the information that they give. Like it's just a bad lead. There's nowhere to fill out in their stuff for a bad lead and they do it intentionally hmm. so that getting a credit becomes almost impossible based on the qualification it takes to get a refund or something like that. Out of 10 leads, how many are good leads and how many are bad leads do you receive? How many I, credits do you request? I would say I would say 70% of what we get are pretty strong leads. However, our administrator that follows up on the leads is literally on the phone a lot of times while they're still on the computer. I so I think with all forms of it, it's getting back to people promptly, whether they're just calling in or whatever it is, is being very proactive in returning calls as quickly as you can, because it turns from a somewhat hot lead to a cold lead pretty fast. Makes sense. Um, how else do you find your jobs? I see you have a lot of big, you know, you showed me around this morning, you have big churches, you have apartment complexes. How do you find those? I think it's really just driving around, looking at different properties. When you're a roofing contractor, you're never taking a leisurely drive. You're always looking at roofs. And so doing that, this is my city that I live in, grew up here. So literally I'm at one end of town to the other end of town all the time. And I'm always looking at roofs. So if I see something, you're I like think, a hawk. <laughs> oh sure yeah, you're just earth. flying around. So when I see those type of projects, then I'll let our sales guy know, hey, or sales guys know, hey, there's a good lead over here. We'll make a knock list of jobs that look like maybe it's an insurance job. You've seen today how many T-lock shingles we have. Wow. And then the new one is the three tab, the metric. So if it's metric, we send it into ITEL, maybe one or two shingles on an apartment complex that we took you through today. There may be one or two shingles missing on that project, but because it was a three tab metric, we send it into ITEL, it shows that it's discontinued all those buildings got redone. So if there's people out there that when you see a three tab and it might be a metric for the salespeople out there, stop and put a tape on it and find out what you have because there's a good chance. And we try to always be ahead of it too. We're sending in the ITEL, we're sending in the shingle into ITEL so that when the adjuster does get there and starts wanting to rope de dope us around the block, then we'll just slide the ITEL report across the table and show them that it's been discontinued. And so then the then we're in the claim process. Very cool. What's your favorite project up to date or biggest project up to date? Or is your favorite is your biggest project? <laughs> it would say it would tend to seem that way. Um, I would say we did a hospital project back in 2016. Is it at Copilot Roof? Yes, that had the copper color steel shingle on it. So that was just one of them, but it was a big project. So it just took a lot of thinking to run it properly. And I'm not naive to think that the installers did the heavy lifting, did great, um, great time management. The job went fairly flawlessly. So biggest business challenge in 2021. Biggest business challenge in 2021. I think it always revolves around for us efficiency. At 58, technology and automation has to become my friend. And so I would say um, just adding to process and efficiency without making it heavy and corporate feel. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when you make a mistake, it doesn't mean that it's time to change policy and procedures. But then sometimes it does, and then it's just evolving into that part and, and allowing that process to take place. You stayed small for 27 years. This year you decided to scale. 
what led to the decision why all of a sudden grow and scale and go big or go home i think really being part of some of the roofing communities and being a part of different mastermind groups within the roofing industry it just opens up your eyes you're around bigger players you're seeing different opportunities you're learning different techniques you're learning new information about how you can grow and scale and so it goes because we want to make it bigger than just our company we want to work and have a purpose and a mission bigger than the dollar bigger than just making money because we know we can all make money in this our big thing is to create relationships and you go well everyone's creating a relationship with a homeowner not really at the level that we do because it's we drill down deep when we're in the in the homeowner's home because our ultimate goal is to really establish a strong relationship and maybe that leads to referrals and other things so do you have a um goal in mind like how many how big do you want to grow several locations dollar amount amount of jobs per year well right now we're in three locations and and small i guess is somewhat relative when what do you think of when you think a smaller company revenue wise what would you consider a smaller company a one two million is pretty small okay it's owner operator almost no employees or one two helpers that's your one million dollar company then mid-size you know three to five and then bigger companies i would say seven ten goes on so i'd say where we fall in that medium size category so our goal this year is between five and six million mm -hmm. in montana working on 200 working days a year we're pretty selective of the jobs we get involved in we tell people we're not for everyone which is one of the nice things after 27 years it's because offensive. we can i know and someone told me that but i the way i look at it is because we only have 200 working days we have to be somewhat selective of the opportunities that we take and i want to be able to look at the homeowner just like the homeowner looks at me and go is this a good fit so it isn't just one-sided i know it sounds funny but after 27 years i think i've earned it it's i really look at it as um when i was in my 30s wanted every job there was as I start going forward, I realize there's not everyone I want to do business with. So America's Choice does cater to a certain type of homeowner. They're a little bit more educated, a little bit more affluent in terms of the information that they're requesting. They're not the type that says, hey, throw me the bid in the mailbox and I'll get back to you. They want to sit down. They want to look across the table eyeball to eyeball. They want to ask you questions that are important to them. We know even on the phone call when our administrator gets a phone call she'll say that's our homeowner and so we it's i don't know if i could really quantify what those things are when we say that mm -hmm. but it's just the whole overall communication from the minute they call in on the phone to the time that the appointments run what trends do you see in the roofing industry right now what's trending uh, i know we have labor shortage that's almost a trend negative but trend we have materials price increases also a trend do you see um, good trends like i see uh, you, you showed me today your metal metal manufacturer here it looks like metal is in the rise do you see trend in metal um roofs in this in i market. think i think really in montana that the trend on metal roofing is definitely probably when you said that i was probably a little bit lost for words mm -hmm. but then when you said metal roofing i would definitely say we get some hellacious winds through the fall and into the winter and so a metal product is going to be much more sustainable you're not going to have the blow-offs and the different things like that so i would definitely say you know standing seam some of your steel shingle products your stone coated like till core and those type of ones are we're really pushing more they're going to have higher wind ratings better impact resistant ratings and things of that nature so i definitely say as a company we're looking at probably really trying to do more in the stone coated steel shingle 
arena, probably more standing seam and things like that as well. Well, do you think metal roofs are much better than shingle roofs? I think there's some that's barn metal yeah. is our way of maybe combat combating and maybe doing a little bit more steel shingle. Mm -hmm. So I like the term barn metal for certain types like exposed fastener. A little bit more like barn metal, right? Do you want barn metal on your house or do you want a nice tail core product? Absolutely. Makes perfect sense. Um, who makes the best asphalt shingle in your opinion? IKO? No. Oh. I would say really we've come to settle on malarkey. Just I think they've probably been a lot more disruptive than most shingle manufacturers over the past five years years or so, their innovation is greater than most of them. And I think a lot of the bigger companies kind of rested on their laurels. And now all of a sudden you have a smaller company that these bigger ones are having to take notice of, and they've taken certain market share. Mm -hmm. And I think all of a sudden now you have some of the bigger, because I think some of the bigger companies have better propaganda. Mm -hmm. a couple come to mind that I think they're brochures and some of their marketing material is very good. The pictures and how they market their product is a lot better than like maybe a Pabco or some of the other shingles, at least the type of literature we get on some of these is maybe not as up to par. I think Gaff probably has some of the best marketing material from just a visual standpoint flipping through brochures and different things i think they're pretty strong but yeah they're, they're a marketing company for sure uh recently when we did 2021 shingle guide and i'm not gonna spoil who won or who got uh, at the highest but we have 11 people 11 guys testing them for like five hours straight waiting touching like measuring looking at the granule loss flexibility like pretty much everything at the end uh, I, I just asked guys, and we were writing down data, but without, I mean, we were giving like five stars, four stars, like all day long. But at the end, I asked guys, who do you think makes the best shingle? Like from what would you see, like before we analyze all the data and stuff, and three shingles actually came up. The, uh, everybody in the room says, who was the most impressive? It was Malarkey Highlander, it was OC Duration, and it was Ico Dynasty. Really? I had the first two out of three. As, as a, the most impressive performer, like, and I'm talking about guys who actually looked at it and touched it, like, that was impressive shingle. Just like by playing with it, it next to other brands, like those three. And I mean, we have it on camera, guys named it. And during it, like, I could honestly would lose in a few tests and uh, Malarkey Highlander was just like really well packaged, very, like, just the cool products. And I could honestly, I would say, like, if I would name a product of the year, I would give it to Ica Dynasty. Really? It, well, the reason is because it's overall, it's innovative, it's newer. The technology, like, you have not seen a lot of, like, real changes. Like, all shingles are somewhat similar. Like, we've seen, I mean, if OC Duration would be brand new, I would say OC Duration. But OC okay. Duration has been in the market for years. Yeah, true. With the technology. But now we have uh, Malarkey uh, 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 Dynasty with a strip on the back. It just, it feels different. Like, another one So too. what, how thick is the laminated overlap? inch inch and a half so, so it, it's it, the way they've done it is different like um, as a matter of fact if you nail it uh, you know how you have double laminated area mm -hmm. common bond mm -hmm. area yeah yeah that's what i'm talking about if you about. nail in it it doesn't have as good as a strength as if you nail higher because what they did they add the strip on the back that Th oh, okay. think about oh, okay. OC strip at the front yes. and that's what we did uh, when we surprised so when we nailed it at common bond it's actually missed the strip on the back and it was easier to pull it was still impressive but easier. How did, where do they say to put because I'm not familiar with the IKO it IK was a little bit higher so there's a nailing zone okay and so you, the nailing zone is above the laminated area I, I think it, it's both because it's three so quarters so you can miss it. But the point is, if you miss it, if you do like single High. bond air, higher, if you do higher, the back strip protects it and it prevents 
from ripping it. Okay, so here's my thing that I always say, because everyone talks about we, we six nail, we eight nail, we 10 nail. When we get the winds that we get, mm -hmm. it's gonna, the front lip of that shingle is your glue strip that's mm -hmm. holding it down. Exactly. So, and we've so, tested. It, so it, it, it can pull back, here's my point. It can pull back when it gets creased. Yeah, it's gonna stay on the roof, but the, the seal is broke. True, and, and we've tested that too. So we, we've tested, actually the test what we did, we uh, put shingles together with no nails on the, on the ground for like, for, oh, for, I, I did for, see that. For like, okay. a day, for like a day, and then we lifted it up, and with time, how long did it take to seal, and how long will it take to fall to, for the bottom piece to fall off? So that is probably more important to me than the other. True. With the wind, with but, the wind. But we did we did, we did the in combination of both. So like for example, when we did a seal test, we we measure the sealant. We see okay, this and you shingle, just let it seal by itself. Yes, but we did both. We physically measured it. We're like, okay, look at this shingle and look at the amount of sealant they put in. And we would say, like, this is definitely five stars. And then we went and we seal it and to make sure it performed as a five stars. And we would do a sealant test combination of both. What was the temperature? Um, it was like 60. So okay, it, so that's a moderate, pretty it, moderate. Exactly. Not, not too not low, a, not, not too high. Not a hot day, exactly. So, and we tested them to was see... Was it laying on asphalt? No, just on the, on the ground, oh, on, the okay, ply, on the plywood. Okay. On the plywood, it was like very cool. It's Philadelphia, so it's not uh, two weeks ago. So it's like you, you barely have your first sun, sunny days. You still can install. And, and you did it to all of them? Yeah, all of them, twice. And so I'm thinking there had to be a, a real leader because it's going to matter with the type of adhesive well, that they're using. Tr true, for but the what, what we were looking for, like eventually all of them will f fall off. We wanted to, I think we, we established like, will they do a minute? Because some of them were falling off under 30 seconds. Like I think the uh, shortest was like 22 seconds. And then after one minute, you have to really work it for it. So oh. we're like, you know what? If, if it's hold it for a minute, we're going to pass it with just, it's a five star. If it's like 30 seconds, it's four stars. And if it's 22 seconds, it's like three stars or less. So we really wanted uh, shingles to seal as fast as possible because you know it better than I do. You install it on a somewhat colder day. If it doesn't seal for the first couple of days, that's where you blow off. Blows that don't happen three years down the road. They happen first two weeks. True, <laughs> true. Because I, yeah, we had someone, some with a particular um, manufacturer, an unnamed manufacturer. Hashtag not sponsored. Papco. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and that's the real problem because. You, you know, you can look at the sealant, you can look at the, you know, all the specs, but then I, and it's not even how do they perform per standard, it's how they perform against each other. If you have one that seals within four hours and another one does not seal in three days, that tells me that this one, for me at least, gets five stars. They figured it out and they're like, as an installer, I'm more confident in installing the one that will will not fall off after a minute even if you know on the next day but does it matter when they were the run of that particular bundle versus other because one that's been sitting in a yard i think there's so many different things that go into but, but, but again we, we see you can also see the sealant by itself you physically can see amount of sealant they put on like, for example, you know, if you have 11 shingles, you can see that there's, you know, it's a bit of caulk, essentially. You see, like, okay, this one is 3 eighths, and this is 1 eight. This one is consistent thick line, and now this one is... Now do that over all the shingles in a company, that little glue exa strip exactly. over Thank over you. hundreds of Thank thousands of millions Thank of you shingles. Thank you very much. Out. It's savings. It's savings. So we see with our eyes, okay, this one is very thin line so four stars for now but we're going to see how it performs and then if it performs like that we're like okay if it performs good maybe it's a stronger sealant i don't know so you have to look at the combination you have to be objective you have to see do they save money you have to see does it perform you have to see and but you, do roughing guys really care because everyone if you ask if if i do a certain brand that i carry 
and then another you guy, and he just does this, you, this you, one. You, you will, Everyone defends what they you, put on. You, you will care after you start having some blow-offs. Oh, sure. no question. And we have to be, obje- and again, this is why we do the test. Like we actually have guys who install Atlas, who install Malarkey. Like we have different guys. Like it's, it, it's like roofing Olympics. You can come and you can root for your shingle, but you still like, it, it's At like the a, end of the day, it's like a race. And we, we put them to the test together and we like, and, and that's the whole point of making this shingle guide that I want manufacturers to see that we're paying attention. Like for example, granny loss is big for all roofers, right? We all agree that you should not have pounds of granules in the gutter. Like we agree Hashtag. with it. <laughs> Hashtag. Well, uh, actually, actually Papco was the worst of the worst. The worst of like 6.1 grams where like OC Malarca was like less than one gram. Let me ask you this. Huge difference. When everything's in the world of weight with the shingle, what we now consider a 30 year shingle, Mm -hmm. and someone's trying to take market share, is that intentional with certain manufacturers to say that their shingle weighs more? Because Pabco says that it weighs more, right? Mm -hmm. But then when you take it out of the thing, and you yeah. shake the shingle, and, 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 again, and now by the time you come down, that's, that, that's where you look at the whole thing. Like uh, the way I test shingles is the same way we uh, we test athletes at CrossFit. You can be the fastest, you can be the biggest, you can be the strongest, but you have to be good overall. Like best athletes, they can run a mile like under six minutes. I don't know. They can do fifty pull ups and they can spot five hundred pounds. But some athletes can do only one and then they have no mobility for others. They have no gymnastics or no endurance. The same thing here. You can be the heaviest shingle. So this would be the shingle gymnastics. Pretty much. Well, almost. Like you can be the heaviest would shingle. Would it be an Olympic type thing? Yeah. Like look, it, it, like in case of Pepco, let's say Pepco gets five stars for being the heaviest. But then if you lose in a granule loss, if you lose in the nailing zone, if you lose in everywhere else, that's the only thing you have at the end. You're still going to be two-star Question, shingle. Question, are shingles better today than they were 25 years ago? 100%. They are better. Based on what? Uh, observation. So like Reese report, Reese used to do it like 25 years ago, shingles did not have se- second ceiling lines. They didn't. So they still listen. Do you think there's compromises? Because I guess I might be from the other school that says... Sure that there, we have this shingle. Oh, look at this, OC has the one here. They get us looking at stuff, but are they really all the composition in a shingle? My thing personally is I think they get better with the rhetoric and the propaganda, but I don't know that as far as the asphalt y- yes, content and the other stuff true. is any better. Yes, yes and no, here's my answer to that. I believe they have, um, Here's how I answer it. I believe that manufacturers, we roofers make them more accountable these days because of the internet. It's much harder to get away with the bullshit propaganda. Like if you have uh, billions of dollars like State Farm or Allstate and you can be on national TV, brainwash people, population, you can get away with it. In a smaller niche like asphalt shingles, you can get in a big, big trouble by, you know, like you live in a world of class action lawsuits. A lot of lawyers are looking at you. It's government regulated. So if we roofers call them out and we point on few things here and there, they're careful. That's why they don't open their lines. I, I firmly believe that they do not let us to come with cameras to their facilities, not because of the trade secrets. There's no trade secrets. All their facilities looks like that. And manufacturer, if you look uh, looking at this, I'm telling you this, All I've been in many plants. They look like the same person build them. Okay. It, it, it's all like, it's very similar. I'm pretty sure there's, you know, malarkey. And OC. So is there different grades of asphalt and different things like L- this? A little bit, but that, that's... So you don't think it's a primary that, That's not why they okay. don't let you with the cameras. They don't let you with the cameras. It's not so, IP type of related stuff. It's, it's more of, a, they don't want you to see the bullshit. They don't want you to see the... Uh, let me ask you this way. 
You've been in plants before, right? Mm -hmm. I've not been, no. No plants? No. I've been at many. Every plant have a big pile of shingles that didn't make the cut, didn't, didn't get shipped, right? Every single one of them. I've, and I've been at many. Like there, on one plant, they literally were making it to the dumpster and dumpster was going to the landfill because they messed up the formula or whatever. So okay. he, here's the catch. Have you ever heard of asphalt shingles being recalled? You've been doing it 27 years. Have you ever seen, just like we have in the car industry, that it was a bad batch, we we're recalling it, we're getting back. Have you ever heard of shingle to be recalled? I have not. Now tell me why. Okay. Well, I, I'm not going to tell you why. It's just the common sense. Think about this. So they do have a quality control. And a lot of shingles don't make the cut and go to the scraps. But once they ship it, it's it's cost to return, right? So pretty much... What, what are the chances that they actually shipped bad shingles and didn't scrap them? Like 100%. Like it, it happens, right? Like, I mean, it's just common sense because all of them, like no matter how good quality control is, it will happen. Now, once it gets shipped, it will get installed. Once it gets installed, it's there. And now we have failures. I mean, look at organic certain key right. look and i've seen temco shingles where lines is like this mm -hmm. you know you open them they crap they don't re they don't recall them they let it be and let the homeowner deal with it if homeowner or contractor or whatever because it costs money it costs freight co it, it costs a lot of money to recall so they they say well we'll deal with it when we we'll deal with it and so then, it's really unregulated it's not regulated it's hard to recall a shingle they should recall them they should replace them for bad badges whatever they don't do it because they have armies of lawyers they have is that bad faith though it could be but they also have a, this horrible thing in the agreements with the contractors where if you sell this particular brand you cannot disparage us so they have this disparage clause where you know you're my partner you're my dealer you cannot talk about so as you, long as i'm saying good things you're then good that's good and if, if, and if you say you, bad you're disparaging exactly so they're they claim their you know the failure rate for shingles like half a percent i think it's few more percent than that because you know we all have seen it but sometimes like you said earlier when you install a siding job, people see it, people touch it, people are complaining about it. You see a siding job with a bad fade, come on, like you're gonna be replacing that wall. You see a bad roof with a ton and groove like or, or tiger teeth not matching up, a little bit wavy, homeowners don't go there. So roofing shingle many roofers get away with a lot of things, but the roofing shingle manufacturers get in, even with a lot of more things. But at least their prices are coming down. <laughs> you are so <laughs> funny and they, they keep increasing their prices it's never going down no matter for our material but if oil cost, prices go down our shingle prices can go they up they say that it's not cost of asphalt as a matter of fact asphalt is you know, okay. what, like 20 30 percent of the shingle i mean it's, come on well the, the point is we have to make them accountable internet is a beautiful thing more roofers should not be afraid to go publicly. We like you making them accountable, though. No, like, that's the thing. I cannot do it myself. Uh, like, and I see so many roofers. Here's the thing. I have quite a few guys, friends now, who started YouTube channels, and they would not cover any of those stories because they don't want to ruin relationships. Okay, gotcha. Because they, they want a sponsorship's money. They want relationships they wouldn't do it they're they they want to be politically correct but not everyone is a whistleblower or disruptive i think that you you have have it in you your personality and as a teacher you have to do what's right not agreed, for you but, but agreed, for public I agreed but you seem to <laughs> you dimitri's the one that runs towards the flame <laughs> it's in a it, good it, way it, it, into the storm well just when you wire it a certain way you, agree you, you, you can't yes. you, you, you cannot not be true to yourself no and i and i agree and i believe that's your purpose and what you do and who you are is because you bleed that type of blood how do you measure roofs eagle view eagle view every job we try to i think just when we're in season especially it makes it just that much handier 
So as soon as someone calls in, even if they're going or not, we're probably going to pull an eagle view. Have it with us. Quite honestly, sometimes when I have to pull out the tape to do it the old-fashioned way. Do you feel like we're getting lazier? I do, yes, absolutely. Not going yes, on the roofs? Yes, so I always still like to get up on them to inspect them and walk them and do all of that. As far as the time savings of an Eagle View or other measuring roofing systems. Have you used any others? We really haven't. No, we're pretty much yeah. Eagle View. Most common objections you hear from homeowners. Is it the price? Is it we're getting through the estimates? Is it you're the highest bid and we want, we're hoping to find someone cheaper? Probably, yeah, we're collecting estimates or things like that. Um, got another person coming over for an estimate or... Yeah, I guess I, that's a good question. Since I'm trying to transition out of the selling part, thanks to my team, thinks I no longer need to be in the field running their leads. So, yes. Um, so mainly price? I would say so. Do you, do you see more and more people asking to um, cover their deductibles in this market? I think they do, but I think I've seen something interesting on a group post lately, just showing the actual language of that, you know, if it's a law or whatever, specifically what is classified as fraud. Mm -hmm. And the language of it was pretty clear, no matter how you try to code over it or cover it or whatever, that it's something that we we don't practice it's it is their responsibility it is their co-insurance part of it and quite honestly the people that end up paying their deductibles i really think they're our type of homeowner to begin with the people that are trying to think that somehow i have an extra thousand dollars or five hundred dollars or two percent of their deductible to pay why is that my responsibility I mean, when especially in, in, a, in a point of our industry right now where we're seeing deductibles be two to three to four percent of a home value, and you're seeing five, six, seven, I've heard ten to twelve thousand dollar deductibles, mm -hmm. you know, obviously that's putting a strain on families and different things like that that are trying to make ends meet. But then when they have a claim, now they're exposed to this big number that they may or may not even been aware of. How Montana is different from other places as far as roofing goes, roofing market? I would say really with the weather that we get here, we always look like we're going into every year starting um, Q1 to Q4 that we're going to have 200 working days. And so that's really begins to be our big thing. When we have the working days that we have all the jobs set up so that we can be doing a large majority of all of our installs. Because if you're losing good days and you're not installing on the good days and you're only working off of maybe 200, mm -hmm. you really have to have, have it dialed in so that you're maximizing the crews and your profitability. What objections do you hear from insurance companies for not paying, not opening claims? No comment. No comment. <laughs> it's not enough, not enough damage. We don't cover that. Yeah, I think it's always that dance between... Again, I just keep coming back. If you have a legitimate claim on a roof and you know your stuff, then do really good documentation, deliver that to the adjuster or desk adjuster in a way that is pleasant. Because I think most of the most of the problems come within our industry is the contractor comes in with an attitude, but we always think it's the adjuster coming in with the attitude. Mm -hmm. And I think playing nice 
And I know there's a lot of people out there that hear that and they go, I just can't play nice. But then they just don't play nice with anyone. And I think really, if I come into it with really a humble spirit, gracious spirit, you're not always going to win every every fight that you're you're called to. But really, number one, have really good documentation, have a legitimate claim and handle it that way and try not to get into it the adjusters because once an adjuster is offended or a desk adjuster is offended, you're just working uphill. And I think we don't always have to work uphill. So I'm kind of in the middle of the road between going, I like a good fight, <laughs> but then sometimes I like, I, I don't, it's exhausting. Last question here. Uh, give homeowners an advice with insurance claims. A few tips maybe. I would say find a really good contractor. Do it by referral. If you have friends or family that have used a contractor. And say the question again, I'm sorry. Just a few tips to the homeowner who might be dealing with the insurance claim. Like maybe missing shingle like what he should be prepared or she for before starting insurance claim. A lot of homeowners don't know the process. They don't, like they've never filed a claim before and they've seen someone maybe have insurance claim and now they, they're like, what, what, what is that for me like? I would just probably start off with finding a good contractor that can do a proper inspection and that's used to dealing with an insurance claim so that they can walk you through the process because a lot of homeowners don't know that process as far as how to file a claim. Maybe someone that comes out, gives you a proposal, takes some pictures, does a documentation, and kind of gives you just a brief overview of what insurance process can be like. I don't know if that yeah. really answered, no, no. really. That's good, you did good. Thank you so much for your time, I appreciate it. Man. I'm a little bit jealous, you know, I always recommend people to get office right away. And I'm like, maybe if you're in Montana and you have a short season, maybe you don't need it. <laughs> All the overhead and headache. But it really is when we first started 27 years ago is being able to, I mean, but every day you wake up, you're already at the office. Mm -hmm. And so maybe not all it's cracked up to be, but from really, I think some times we start adding those expenses to stuff when really you're not ready when really how many people get visited by customers coming to their office anyway because we had talked about opening up a showroom and six seven eight ten thousand dollars a month even though people wouldn't come in but having a showroom of people to come to a brick and mortar because no one's doing showrooms and then the light comes on and goes no one's doing showrooms because no one ever comes to your um, office. But then I think there's some big companies out there that have some really great build outs and have the showrooms. I think it's more for, in the roofing business, more for employees, subcontractors, you know, production manager, more for people to work up. Like, if true, you're ready to true, scale, yes. if you want to stay small, I think this is fine. But if you, you really want to stay st small, keep it all, <laughs> right? And we're ready to start delegating that and starting to grow. So we appreciate having you here today. Thank, Thank you, you, sir.